to see if it comes through. Yep, looks like it's worked. <clears throat> I well, haven't got it at my end just yet, so. Okay, there we are. All right, yep, what's up, fellas? We are live, and we are. We're just going to share this to all of our um, channels, of course. But just to let you know, anybody that's watching straight away, we're going to be talking about how to use progressive overload and periodization to prevent plateauing. You know, if you're into your strength training and flexibility, which you obviously are if you're watching this channel, um, you'd know the frustration of plateauing, right? Like you get this initial result when you start training. You feel great and then all of a sudden it just plateaus and no matter how hard you train or how much you push you uh, can't seem to break through strength and flexibility plateaus i really know what that feels like with calisthenics uh and that's when periodization and progressive overload comes in and that's what we're going to talk about today but before we do that yanni and i are just going to share this stream to our social channels Ricky, how are you, mate? Many blessings from Birmingham, Alabama. Many blessings to you too, Ricky. Thank you for joining in and for saying hi. And if you are watching live, say hello so we can give you a shout out. Give us a quick hello while we're sharing this everywhere. Everybody. Everybody. Sorry, guys. This is this is we we have to give everybody a little bit of a chance to join the live stream as well, which is why we go live while we're doing this. <clears throat> okay, I'm almost there. I've just got to share it to our app forum now. you've just tuned in we're about to go live we're just sharing this to our socials so that people can join in oh, on. you're done yeah okay i'm almost there oh like it okay everybody welcome to the show so uh, I'll say it again it, what we're going to be talking about today is how to avoid plateau you know for those of you watching we know that you guys have been training for at least 12 months and that you've got some experience you've got some skin in the game you know you've you've had some exposure to strength and flexibility training maybe not so much flexibility we know a lot of people come to our channel because they want to learn more about flexibility and when you've been training for 12 months or more you've almost certainly experienced a plateau you know you get this initial you know boost in strength when you try something new when you're doing something for the first time and uh all of a sudden, for no apparent reason, it just plateaus out and you push harder, you work harder, you do more days, you train longer, you do more sets, but it doesn't seem to get you those initial results anymore. And it doesn't have to be that way. That's when progressive overload and program design and periodization come in. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how you use uh, periodization. And if you don't know what periodization is, because a lot of people don't, and it, it's, it's something that you it takes a lot of practice, a lot of study, because what periodization is, it's when you change any or all of a, of a couple of variables in your program. So one of them is exercise selection. So if you go from a flat barbell bench press to an incline barbell bench press or an incline dumbbell chest press, that's a, an example of changing exercise selection, but for the same movement. The second is to change the amount of weight you lift, which also determines how many reps you're lifting. So, you know, there's an inverse relationship. If you go from a 
10 kilo dumbbell to a 20 kilo dumbbell, you're gonna be lifting less reps per set, okay? Next one is how much rest you have between your exercises. Uh, the next one is the tempo that you use, so how fast your eccentric is, how fast your concentric is. And then of course we have overload uh, techniques as well. So things like drop sets and supersets and um, tri-sets and all that stuff. And what we do in the UMS is we get people in the first three phases doing a technique optimization phase where we where each periodization, each uh, four week program periodization, the only things we change are the exercise selection. So we go from, for example, a flat dumbbell chest press to a flat barbell bench press. And we also gradually go, we gradually increase the weight, increase the intensity and reduce the rep range. And we do that over three phases. Then we do an intensification phase, which is a five by five phase. So that's the first real heavy lifting phase. And then we move into our uh, overload techniques. And the way we do it in the UMS is, we have uh, we do supersets, then wave loading, then rest pause method, then one five, then accumulation drop sets, then strength rep drop sets, then ascending tri sets, and then contrast sets. And uh, it's a lot of fun. And recently, we had some of our members say to us, "What do you do after phase twelve? What happens when you get to twelve to phase twelve? How do we do that?" And it's a question that I wanted to answer on a video. Uh, well, Yanni actually said to me, "Let's answer this via video." And I said, "You know what?" Maybe some, of our, uh, maybe some of our audience on YouTube will get some value out of this. So I'm gonna throw this over to Yanni now because Yanni, when it comes to program design, Yanni is the expert. I sort of hang off his coattails when it comes to program design. And um, yeah, I'll throw you over. What do you do, Yanni? What do you do after you've done all of those overload techniques? <coughs> I just caught you. <laughs> dad, dad joke. <laughs> I'm actually having a little a little giggle here uh, reading through the comments from the last couple of um, uh, days on our YouTube channel and stumbled across the, the across the um, the comment uh, from one of our subscribers saying it's so refreshing to see someone with such a um, uh, a good rig so flexible speaking about rad and I, and I thought oh that is quite. That's quite cute. That one, that uh, one made my day when I read that. Uh, that was, uh, <laughs> that was. I, I read that and I was like, yes. <laughs> we have a bit of an inside joke here uh, at yeah, Unity Gym. Yeah, I right always there. give, I, I always give Rad a lot of, um, a lot of flack because he's never really been into bodybuilding. He's he never really got into bodybuilding or powerlifting, and 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 therefore never really um, focused on muscular hypertrophy for a, a long period of tr like a training cycle, unlike um, myself and some of our colleagues, uh, I had a period of probably a decade where it was just like my ultimate goal was to get bigger because I was so skinny. And um, and so I sort of always give him a little bit of slack that he's-, he's But that was in the past because that's, that's me about, um, I think that was a month ago or six weeks ago. And I've even put on another kilo or two since then because I have absolutely adopted the mentality that I need as much muscle as possible. And this is just a little side note, but I fought this concept for so long and it was probably, if I'm really big and I own up to my own, you know, ego, it was probably because Yanni was into hypertrophy training and I was into martial arts and it was a brotherly rival rivalry thing. And I was like, oh, stuff that. I don't need to get any big muscle. And he got, when, he got sick of seeing these guns. <laughs> but, when I, the but when I started doing calisthenics training and I started to get injured, in my shoulders and Yanni was the only person that actually really said to me probably the one thing that I really would have listened to because even some of the best coaches around the world that I was working with they were always giving me progressions and regressions and all the different things to do and Yanni always said the same thing he said mate you got to build some muscle you got to build some muscle in your upper body so that you've got the muscle mass to to lift your body off the ground and uh, I finally listened to it and I'm finally making some real progress. I've put on some good muscle in the last few months and I'm getting a lot better at my calisthenics training. So there's my little side note there. And, and before I segue, because that's a great segue into what we want to talk about, but before I do, it, it's, it's, um, it's sort of funny that that's exactly what happened to me back when I was boxing competitively by my coach. And I was starting to hurt myself a lot and I, I, I had a couple of um, elbow injuries uh, at one point I threw an overhand right and, and it was an air swing. The guy uh, parried my punch and I really hurt my elbow and, and just got a series of injuries. And, and, and I was like, if you saw photos of me, I was very skinny, you know, 
And uh, my boxing coach actually was the reason why I started pumping iron at the gym. He said, mate, you, you might want to go and try and put a bit of mass on, you know, you, you, a strong wind would blow you over. And that got it all started back when I was about 20 years old. Anyway, uh, a good segue because what we were talking about there is it, it, actually hypertrophying a muscle. And, you know, what, what I want to just pre-frame the reason why understanding program periodization and then a very important key aspect of program periodization is um, uh, harnessing or using uh, or following a program that is pr progressively overloading your body is there you go so that bottom photo was me doing a photo taken from my major work in at school in art uh, i was an illustrator you were and that then. When I was, yeah that's when i was competitively boxing so that was around the time that my trainer said hey you know um i was about six six one and um about 70 kilos or le like yeah very light anyway anyway um well, long story well, short um what what we need to preframe is the the need for progressive overload and pro, and, and then program periodization because program periodization and progressive overload kind of go hand in hand oh look at that there's the there's the recent shot <laughs> Uh, <laughs> and so what we um uh what we do is when we start exercising the, the 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 majority of the uh adaptation occurs on a neurological level uh there's a there's about six neurological adaptations that occur they come from you know starting in the brain and building new neurons for movements that you may or may not have done before strengthening those neurons uh, then the intra and intermuscular uh, uh, coordination, which is basically the um, on, on an inner uh, level inside the muscle, there's chemical reactions occurring that become um, uh, smoother, better, more efficient, um, uh, better coordination in those different um, reactions that are occurring inside the muscle fibers themselves. But then from a macro perspective, uh, the different muscles learning their arrangement and learning how to sequence correctly. A, a very simple, basic example of this is to do a bicep curl. The brain doesn't just need no, to, to know how to contract the two bicep uh, tendons. It also needs to know how to relax the tricep tendons. And this is a very easy, uncomplex movement to get your head around. Uh, so we pick it up very quickly. But for an absolute layman who's never done a Scott curl in the gym or a, a, a preacher curl, part of getting stronger is the brain t learning to turn that muscle off so that the bicep can work unrestricted. Um, uh, you know, and that's just a very, very base level example of what's occurring in the brain. Now, those neurological adaptations occur very quickly. And uh, it usually takes, you know, maybe two or three workouts before your brain figures out, okay, I don't need my triceps when I do a bicep curl and vice versa. And uh, on the more complex movements like the squat or deadlift or chin up, there's a lot more joints involved. So it's having to work out more um, intermuscular coordination and intramuscular coordination. Uh, and so those take a little longer to learn. But those neurological adaptations occur very, very quickly. And it's, it's well documented that you can expect a, around about a 30% increase in strength within the first month of training, within the first 30 days of training. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's fun as a strength and conditioning coach to take um, credit for that. But realistically, all that comes from is repetition, you know, doing the reps, uh, turning up to the gym, uh, doing these movements over and over again so the brain can learn these sequencing patterns and uh, strengthen the neurons. And there's a bunch of other physiological adaptations, uh, sorry, uh, neurological adaptations that occur, six in total. I won't go through all of them. We're not here to, uh, oh my God, I just got something in my eye. Um, but what I really want to do is um, pre-frame the importance of program periodization because beyond that initial neurological adaptation, which again occurs very quickly within the first four weeks, um, the next step to gaining strength is the actual hypertrophy of the muscles, to strengthen the muscles, to change in some cases the composition of the muscle fiber makeup. And, um, and that takes a little longer. And that requires more than just turning up and doing reps. That requires progressive overload. That requires you adapting to a specific weight, then coming back the following week and lifting more weight and then adapting to that weight and then coming back and that and, and, and eventually 
just um, the the notion of lifting heavier heavier set of dumbbells or a couple of extra weight plates on the barbell each week. Um, initially, that'll work, but eventually, you've got to start manipulating things like uh, rep ranges. You've got to start manipulating the tempo that you're moving at, the time under tension, the recovery periods inside the workout, and the rest periods outside of the workout between your next workout. And all of these different variables become more and more important the further your body gets along the adaptation um, uh, curve um, spectrum. And so you know, this is where uh, program periodization comes in. If you, you know, and, and anyone who's been training for uh, 12 months or more, like the majority of you guys um, watching, will know you hit a point where everything you've done in the past doesn't seem to make you any better. You know, all of your workouts that your mates gave you that, that got you into the gym originally or that the Flex magazines have given you that you read, uh, all of those workouts stop working, stop producing the same results that they produced initially. And it becomes really frustrating. And that's what we really call a, uh, a performance plateau, you know. Uh, and, and at that point is when most people will start to do a bit more research or hire a coach or do something like that um, to uh, start to use what we call overload methodology, which is learning how to squeeze more in to less time. Essentially, that's all overload methods are. How do we... Um, get more intensity and more volume into a workout without breaching the time frame that we've got before the body goes catabolic and starts to just chew away at its own muscle tissue, uh, converting that to energy. Because there is a, a window of opportunity unless you're, ju you know, unless you're the liver king, uh, ju juicing off your tits, um, you, you can't work out all day. You know, you, 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 you have to, there's, there's got to be a start and an end to the workout. And there's arguably around 60 minutes of a really good window of opportunity. If you're, you know, eating an enormous amount of food calories and taking all of the good goodies on the side, the, the nutrition supplements, you might be able to get away with 90 minute workouts. But, you know, I would argue that in most cases, more than 60 minutes and you're now sort of, you know, you're in a completely depleted state. If you're training hard enough, you know, uh, of course, again, unless you're the liver king <laughs> or, or someone who's following the same uh, uh, supplement regime. Um, and so uh, that's when we start to introduce overload methods and overload methods, the most commonly used, which we start our tribe on, Rad, do we, do we start with supersets? Uh, we do. Supersets is yeah. the first one that we use. And, and, you know, uh, supersets, I'm sure everyone's had a go. So there's many, there's a plethora of different ways you can use the idea or the methodology of a superset, but it's really just grouping uh, two exercises together, um, uh, most commonly on the same muscle group. Uh, but you'd go from a complex movement to a less complex movement. But then there's, there's pre-exhaustion supersets, which would be a, an isolated movement to a compound movement. There's so many different ways you can do this. And this is where a good coach comes in because a coach knows um, uh, all of these different of ideas. Supersets. Okay, a, a good coach will know all these different um, uh, methodologies and they use them like tools in a toolbox, you know, at the right time. Um, what is often this is done- a super set. This is a superset. This is a superset for the pecs, for the chest. Okay, so-, so why are you talking? Anyway, we're going to work. Yeah. Okay. Um, so um, essentially what, what's, uh, what, what's needed is to, to and, and where the coach comes in is to know when to apply these overload methods at what time is the right time. Because guess what? You know, you might be sitting there going, well, why don't we just start straight away on uh, overload methods? You don't need them. Initially, during that initial period of maybe four weeks up to 12 weeks. And what, what we've come to the conclusion of is that you really want to, um, optimize technique first. That's the first huge opportunity for performance improvement is to dial in your movement technique to really strengthen those neurons in the brain. Take advantage of those six adaptations that occur in the central nervous system and really make it, um, uh, um, you know, useful in that initial phase. And, you know, some people will do that in eight, uh, eight weeks, you know, two program phases. We choose to do it in three because we find it's just better. 
and uh, and then from there you're more ready. And and one one other thing, there's a lot of other you know physiological um, adaptations occurring. One of them is that your your, your lactate buffering is getting um, is is improving, meaning that you you know you don't experience that burn in the muscle and fatigue as quickly. Your cardiovascular, you know, one of my good friends um, Ben Pokolsky, who was an uh, ex Olympia bodybuilder and a fantastic strength coach um, and life coach, he always used to talk about the need for improved cardiovascular fitness, um, uh, aerobic and anaerobic threshold. Uh, improvement at the very start of someone's training life because that's going to improve the amount of time they can spend under tension. You know, <laughs> funny story, when I first trained with Ben when he was out in Australia, the very first time I met him, you know, he goes, oh, we're going to do legs and uh, we're going to, you know, we'll squat. So let's just warm up. And uh, I said, oh, yeah, cool. And he goes, so we're going to do 100 squats at our body weight. So meaning I was 85 kilos at the time, put 85 kilos on the, on the barbell and do 100 squats. And I looked at him and said, you're kidding me. That's like the hardest workout I've ever done. And he's like, serious? That's my warm up, you know, because he had such incredible aerobic and anaerobic capacity. And he had uh, such incredible lactate buffering that he could bang out 10, get his breath back, bang out 10, get his breath back and do that 10 times at like 100 and something kilos, you know, and I, I couldn't believe it. I, and, and that was the warm up just to get the body going and get some volume cranking, get the blood flowing and, you know, and uh, I'd never seen anything like it. Now, at the time, Ben was an Olympia bodybuilder, so he was um, at that the highest level, you know. But, um, you know, that just gives you an example of how um, improving your, you know, these different system, energy systems in the body is going to carry over to your strength training. You know, the more you can handle volume, obviously, the more time under tension you can put your muscles and the easier you're going to find enlarging and hypertrophying those muscles. Um yeah, and, and so, you know, we have uh, chosen nine of the most popular and popular because they're the most effective overload methods uh, that we've applied to the Unify Movement System. And we only start them in phase four uh, or phase five, I think. Phase four is just five by five, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. And that's a that's a very, very common basic strength um, uh, method, maximal strength method. Um, and then, yeah, we, we, we start to layer on these uh, overload methods to Sorry, create progressive yeah, phase four is five by five for everybody that didn't yeah, hear yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, okay. And, um, and so, yeah, look, it's, uh, it, it, it works exceptionally well. And for the very first time, we've had one of our tribe members ask us, what do you do when you, get, when you finish phase 12? And we've done it in a way that we, we <clears throat> lay out the most common and easy um, overload method first. And then by the end, they're very difficult. Like, you, you know, if you're doing them properly and you're training balls to the wall, like um, maxing out on your lifts, you're, you are cooked. Uh, oh, let yeah, me I'm jump fine. in here for a sec because it'll give you, it'll give everybody a chance to hear my incredible voice. Um, but uh, no, it'll give you a, a little a minute to catch your thoughts and to think about what you want to say to this. But the um my experience and i've done every overload technique in the ums of course because i helped create them uh with yani but when i got out of the army i was in the army as an infantry soldier from age 30 to 34 and when i came out of the army that was the first moment that i kind of said to myself you know what i am going to have to suck this up and really learn how to do weightlifting you know if i'm going to be a personal trainer and be able to stand next to my brother who knows so much more about it than i do and so Yanni and I, for the next 12 months, we went through all of these programs and they murder you. When you do them properly, like when you do an accumulation phase properly, because an accumulation, <laughs> uh, Satya Jit is saying he loves that voice. Um, when you do an, an accumulation phase properly, which is where you're trying to build muscle, that's a, a muscle hypertrophy phase. It is so brutal. It is so full on on the body that you almost cry like you can't do anything on the week for me anyway if you if you go as hard as i do um like your muscles are in such a state of doms for that first couple of weeks it's just so intense and this is where deloading and stuff comes in and so i remember when i had this conversation with yanni last week where we said what are we going to say to george how are we going to help him and because the truth is that when you do the first when you do those 12 phases of the ums what do you do after that's really your introduction to advanced yeah training and what that means is as an introduction is 
you've been exposed to it for the first time. But the people that get all the best results that everybody looks up to on social media and in on stage, these are people that have trained 10 plus years, you know, the people that you're looking up to. You don't do these 12 phases and then look for a whole nother 12 new phases and more and more and more. What you do is you refine what you've already got. Because, you know, there's only so many different ways to squat that's effective, that's really effective, that really good coaches will use. There's only so many different variations to a chest press that you can do, to a pull-up, to, you know, like, you know, you can use ropes on a pull-up. You can use a, a medium, a close, or a wide grip, pronated grip. Same with supinated, neutral grip. But, you know, there's not that many different ways you can do it. And so you don't need to be going through and constantly searching for these new overload techniques. And what we do is when we get to the end of that initial um, introduction to progressive overload and, and overload techniques and periodization is you basically choose your goal of, I wanna build muscle, I wanna build strength, I wanna build skill, whatever it is. And then you undulate your cycles between accumulation and intensification. So intensification is where your the number one goal is max strength. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to increase how much you can lift or accumulation is you're trying to build muscle. You're trying to build how much muscle you've got and they're different goals. And if you have, if it's like, I want to get strong and muscle, well, that's easy. You just cycle between accumulation and intensification one-to-one. -one. But if your goal was more to build muscle, you can do two phases of accumulation, then one phase of intensification and vice versa. And then how do you use the overload techniques? As Yanni said, you only use them when you are really ready for the next month to be a month that is dedicated to training. Because for George and for anyone that's finished the 12 phases of the UMS, you'll know that it is like to get the best results out of those phases, you have to be so switched on. You, like you have to be able to go to the gym every day that you plan. Work can't get in the way. You have to be getting the right amount of sleep and everything. And for most people, that's not realistic that they can do that all the time. And so what Yanni and I do most of the time is... We basically just do a basic accumulation phase, which is just five sets of eight reps and basic intensification phases, which is five sets of five reps, but you vary the exercise selection. So you might do a front squat or a back squat one phase. Yanni, you're frowning like you've got something to add to that. No, 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 sorry. Yeah. And, I, then, I'm, and then- I've when just had been, a smoothie and I'm picking my te all the, the fiber out of my teeth. When, you, when you've been doing that for a couple of months or however long, and you think, you know what, I'm feeling good. You know, I want to go for it on the next month or I feel like I'm plateauing a little bit again. Then you choose one of those overload methods that you've already had experience with that you know how to now do. Because doing an overload method for the first time, when I was doing them all for the first time, like you almost spend the first couple of weeks just really figuring out how to choose the right weights for drop sets. You know, like anybody that's tried drop sets properly probably knows that the first time they did it they grossly overestimated how much they thought they were going to be able to lift on the three drop sets yanni even did that uh when we were filming the um the live drop sets workout for the ums in his first workout he just he got to the second set and he was meant to do 12 reps and he barely got five and he just went oh my god i've lifted too much weight and he, he had to reduce the weight by about 25 percent so when you go back and you do drop sets for the second time you know that you know what you're in for and you can get a better result from it. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I, I have a, um, a meeting with my team for the customer support here. Um, so we do have to bring this in for a landing soon. Well, let, and, let's bring this in for a landing and I'll do, what, I'll do what you wanted hold to say. On, just hold on a sec. Just hold on a sec. Uh, yes, we'll get to that. Um, I, I want to make it absolutely clear that, um, that overload methods are tools in the toolbox and they're not intended to be done once and then never done again. Quite frankly, the second time you repeat an overload method, it's going to be far more effective than the first time because of what Rad just said. You, you, you know, you will s select more appropriate weights. You will select, uh, you, 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 you know, it takes 10,000 reps to master a movement. So I'm sure the first time you do it, you probably haven't mastered the movements that are involved in that program yet. So you're going to have improved results based on the optimization of your technique from first time to the next time. And again, in the third time you do it. And so there's really three ways that you would progress beyond a um, collection of overload methods that you've got in your toolbox. And this is what we do. You know, we generally choose the methods that we felt in like, that we enjoyed the most, uh, and we undulate between um, intensification and accumulation. Meaning, 
Um, you know, you do a high volume, slightly lower weight, uh, hypertrophy workout, uh, build some muscle. Then you go into a um, intensification phase where the focus is on low repetition, very high weights to build maximal strength. And maybe if your goal is hypertrophy, you might do a two to one ratio of hypertrophy volume to intensification or vice versa if your goal is maximal strength. But you usually undulate between those two if you if you know if, if you're just wanting to be a really big, strong, buff dude. Um, but. You know, then from that point on, what we want to do is start to address dysfunctions or weak links in the body. And that way we and the way we would do that is that we start to be more selective on the programs we choose and the primary movements we choose. So let's say your front squat is much weaker than your than it should be in relation to your back squat. And there are ratios and of all of this that we have that we teach our tribe um uh then you you would focus more on front squatting for a uh, a, a, a phase of programming uh probably a macro phase uh if your deadlift was really weak or your chin up or any of the prime you know any of the 15 um, fundamental movements were really lacking then you'd emphasize those in your um, exercise selection uh, but you still can apply the same overload methods you, they don't need to change you know there are you know arguably another a uh, bunch of overload methods we could we could bring in um but you know not many people that i know who ha who are really exceptionally high level in skill or physique um bother with using all these different overload methods you know they generally the people that i see that achieve the best results that, that are the people that you see on social media that have the most incredible physiques it, their training is actually quite simple you know, or, they don't, or, that are, they, or that are the strongest and the most that are the strongest, incredibly yeah. capable. When you speak yeah. to them, their training is, is simple and they do use overload techniques. They have a real place for them. But I think what I want to highlight, what Yanni pointed out there is, the and, and what I said as well, it's this idea of every time you do something new, you've got to learn it. And you'll get to a point where that's not the best way to keep going with your training. The best way to keep going is to be challenging the muscle fibers and the nervous systems in ways that are where you use this programming and this um, periodization and progressive overload that we're talking about to continue to force adaptation. And that doesn't come from trying something completely new all the time. Um, it just yeah, doesn't come that absolutely. way. And, you know, yeah, look, let's, so let's uh, quickly dive in to something that Yanni wanted me to show is, um, you know, the way that we, the way that we do this with people in the UMS app, people have different goals than other people all the time. And people have different life circumstances. And so the way we do things is- And commitment levels and, and training history. Levels. You know, yeah, injury right. history. And so- We've got a very, very, very diverse tribe uh, in UMS. And so what we do is we customize the experience for every user yeah. and- um, why don't you dive in and show? Well, you know, a lot of people don't, um, wouldn't really know exactly what it is that we, uh, you know, the way that, that, that we customize workouts to build. So this is just a little example of how, um, you know, how you write programs for people based on what their, what their goals are and what their needs are and everything like that. So we've got one of our members recently um, made a comment in one of our forums and this is what the back end of our app looks like of course for us on the forum uh, but sarah has said that she'd like to switch to a three day a week program because work's gone crazy and she was doing five days a week so i said no problem um, you need to fill out this questionnaire so that we can understand what your goals are Sarah's filled out the questionnaire. It tells us here what she's here for. It tells us what her, what her main goal is, how long she wants to do it for, uh, when she wants to achieve her goal and how many days a week she can train. So the fact that she said, I wanna be able to do pull-ups without assistance and I can train three days a week, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. What I've done is I've gone in and given her a custom program based on her goals. Now she has, since then gone and added the flexibility masterclass here, which is uh, all of these middle splits and hamstrings workouts and stuff. But what I've given her on Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday is two days a week, she's doing bent arm strength and front splits because those are her goals. And she's doing a pull-up specific program. So vertical push-pull. So one-to-one -one ratio of shoulder press and pull-ups. That's on Tuesday and, 
uh, Saturday. So there's at least 72 hours rest between each of those workouts. And then in the middle on the third day, she's doing a squat day. So it's upper body strength, lower body flexibility, lower body strength, upper body flexibility, and then back to upper body strength, lower body flexibility. And that is how you look at writing programs from a coach's perspective based on people's goals. And it's different. There's, there's principles that we use in programming that stay true, at least in the UMS, where we balance strength and flexibility in every workout. We balance pushing and pulling in a one-to-one ratio. We balance upper and lower body strength throughout a one week period, things like that. But then goals for an individual determine and schedule availability determine the program that they get. So we just wanted to share that because we had a bunch of people asking us recently, how do I go? What does a custom program look like? How does it how does it work? X, Y, and Z. And that's it. Yeah, and it, 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 I'll just add, you know, the UMS is constantly evolving. Rad and I will never, never settle. Um, and that's a new system, our new onboarding system where we where we um, survey every single member. And it's 10 simple questions to get a history of what you're doing, what your goals are, what the time frame is or your expectations. Uh, and then from there, that feeds into our coaches and they customize a program for you. And uh uh, that's only been going um, this year for the uh, uh, recently for the last month because it's something that we're slowly building on, you know. So I, I've got uh, it's one very, last very thing. Cool. Anyone who 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 joined the UMS last year will ne- will not have experienced that, and uh, we're running all of our guys bit by bit through this new system so that we make sure that what they're doing right now and what they have access to is absolutely relevant and what they need for their goals. And that's going to constantly change as your needs change and you your your skill sets evolve. And if anybody's watching this still, um, this is a shameless plug, but I'm going to say it because right now the introductory offer to join the UMS. There are no shameless plugs for, when you're plugging for, something that's as good as UMS. But, but the introductory offer to get the app for $49 a month ends tomorrow and it reverts to the full price of $97 a month. So if anybody's sitting on the fence, uh, now is the time to sign up because you can lock in that $49 a month lifetime uh, rate for as long as you stay with us for, and you can cancel whenever you want. So you could try it for a month. If you don't like it, you can just cancel. No questions asked. But if you sign up in two days, it'll be $97. Just uh, like a month. Karina Raglione did just yeah. now. Yeah, uh, we'll just uh, and, uh, uh, awesome. Welcome to the tribe. If you watch our or listen to our podcast, little shout out there. There you go. And anybody watching this, if you've got questions for us to answer, we answer your questions on our channel. So if you've got questions and you're watching this later, type them in the comments and we will go live and make a video on it. That's what we've done today. We've just answered some questions. So uh, if anybody has a question before I end the stream, I'm going to give you about 10 seconds to type in yes, me, and then I won't end the stream while you type your question. So if you have a question, Type yes, me, anything like that, and I won't end the stream. And otherwise, we're going to end in three, two. <laughs> um, well, I've got to go anyway, mate. I've got yeah, my own. Go. We, we, we've minutes got to get going. We've got minutes, minutes, but thanks so much, uh, everybody, for tuning in. It's always great to see you here. And uh, keep those questions. Smash the in. like button and uh, and subscribe if you like. When you see we've got 17 on the live stream. I know it's a, uh, it's a small but loved crew. Uh, yeah, if you haven't already, hit that like button. We've only got five likes and 16 watching. Someone got scared. I called them out. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.